In today's video, I'm going to show you how to retrofit ISOFIX into an early millennium era Audi A4 using these, a set of genuine Audi ISOFIX bars. Let's get to it. Hi, I'm James and welcome to Mostly Helpful. Now I drive a 2003 Audi A4 and I've got two children. But unfortunately, ISOFIX at the time was an optional extra. And because my car is a dealer demonstrator from back in 2003, it has no extras. And so it doesn't have ISOFIX. And in today's video, we're going to look at the process of installing ISOFIX bars, genuine ones, into a 2003 ADA4. Now, before we do that, a word on safety. ISOFIX and the mechanism by which your car seat attaches to it uh, is an incredibly important safety feature and I would never ever recommend retrofitting ISOFIX using anything other than the manufacturer product itself and that goes to using the manufacturer specific bolts at the same time. It's incredibly important that you get the right equipment to do this job and I absolutely wouldn't recommend any aftermarket product. Get your genuine Audi ISOFIX bars or don't do this job, please. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about the tools that we'll need to install our ISOFIX bars. So tools for this job are nice and simple. We need a T40 Torx bit. We need a ratchet and a short extension to tighten them up. And then we need a torque wrench capable of going to 30 Newton meters in order to ensure those bolts are torqued correctly right at the end. And that is all you need. So here at the car, you can obviously see that I've got a high back booster. This is the side my daughter sits on. And because I don't have ISOFIX, the seat has the ability to move around. Now, usual advice is that you, when your child isn't in the seat, you use the seat belt and you retain the seat in the car by buckling it in. But as we are busy parents, we all know that that is something that takes a few seconds, a few seconds that you often don't have. The purpose of the ISOFIX bars then will be to hold this high back booster in place when my daughter isn't in it. The seat belt retains her when she's in the car traveling with me. You can also see that we've got ISOFIX bars on this seat, so this seat is capable of being retained into an ISOFIX situation, and so that's the purpose of today, to fit those bars. Let's get this seat out and get the ISOFIX installation underway. With that high back booster removed, what we now need to do is get access into the back behind these seats here, and that means removing this seat base. And that process involves just putting your hands underneath here and giving it a nice hard tug like this. And then the same on the other side. And with those bits done, I can then just slide out the seat base here and just take it out of the car. So for the rear upright section, uh, what we have to do is remove uh, the headrest first of all. Mine had already been removed because they were interfering, otherwise interfering with the high back boosters. And then we need to remove each of these four um, plastic inserts for the rear. This one I've already tried and it's come out quite easily. So just remove that one like that. And then remove this one like that. They're taking quite a tug, but they come away. Third one, that one's a lot easier. Try not to damage your leather or your fabric. And then this one, it's going to be a bit harder again, I think. Yeah, there we go. So, that one, one, and that one. So with those four items out, this uh, seat then pulls forward. There's a clip here. I've just popped that one and I'm just about to pop this one like that and once you've done that you can then just move the seat belts away and then there are two clips one down here one down here and the seat should lift off them yeah just tilt your seat forward and then you can bring it out of the car. Should be able to see here uh, the clips that we've just undone. And then as you remove it, obviously be careful not to scratch your paint. So with the top half of the seat now gone, we've got much better access into these uh, 
holes that we're going to be bolting our isofix brackets into. One word of uh, note about the isofix brackets is they are handed, so one side will not fit the other. So this is for the uh, behind the driver side here in the UK, and as you can see, it won't fit because this piece here is designed to go in the other recess. If I get my other bracket, what we see is that that fits in really, really nicely. So let's get these tightened in. Good practice would be to um, use a little bit of uh, thread sealer or thread locker on these just to be absolutely sure. But they're done up to 30 newton meters, which is, uh, you know, it's not loads, but it's plenty. And um, so I'm happy to do it without it, uh, partly because I don't have any thread uh, locker. So it's just a case of popping these fixings in. Again, something to note, my bars came out of a, um, a car that was being broken for parts. You can tell they've never been used because there's no witness marks here from any kind of installation of Isofix seat. And I suspect once these became standard on Audi A4s around about 2005, 2006, uh, there were plenty of people then who weren't using children's car seats and so may not have used the Isofix bars. Part numbers for the bars will be in the description. That applies to uh, this B6 platform of A4 and I believe B7, but please do your own research and check. So with those nice and tight, what I'm now going to do is use my torque wrench, set that to 30 newton meters, and then give them the final uh, tighten. And I'm just using an extender here, 75 mil extender, just to clear this bit of the bracket. There we go, 30. And then on the other side, 30 again. I'm going to do the other side off camera and then I'll come back and show the refitting of the seats. So as you can see there, we've now got the uh, other side isofix bar in place. So we've got that one I showed on camera, that one now done. So it's just a case now of getting that back seat in and then the rear bench in. Let's do it. Make sure when you do this back that you get your seatbelt routing correct. Because you don't want to get it all nice and neat and tidy and realise your seatbelts are not in the right place. So my clips are in nicely at the bottom. Just need to free this belt through. Let's get that. There we go. All right, that one's out. That one's out, so then just a case of popping these clips back in. That's that one in. That's that one in too. And then let's get our uh, uh, headrest um, sockets. And then like that. Headrest sockets are in. Seat nice and firm. Just check the seat belts, that's all good. That's all good. And then all we have to do is do our rear bench. Just a point to note, because Isofix was an option at this time, you don't have those cutouts in the leather that show you where your Isofix is. And as you can see, now we've put the back in place. They're still here, obviously, um, but it's gonna take a little bit of effort to find them when we put the seat in. So just something to be aware of. In comes the rear bench. Thing to note is just to make sure that your buckles for your seat belts are in the cutouts for this and you get your third seat belt here and make sure that's out and still usable and then it's just a case of pushing these back down into their clips like, like that that's one let's do the other one There we go, and that's it. So seat done, now time to get the high back boosters in and clipped into their Isofix bars. 
So with the seat all back together, um, as you can see, the Isofix bars aren't immediately obvious, but they are just down here. You can just see the edge of the bar there, and there'll be an edge of one just back here, and the same on the other side. There it is. So with those Isofix bars there extended on the seat, just a case of lining everything up, and then just clipping it in there, clipping it in there, making sure it's fully back. Doing the belt, like that, and there we go. Seat now nice and firmly in place with those Isofix bars that have been installed. And there we go, both seats installed on their Isofix bars and lovely and secure. So there we go, that's how to install genuine AD Isofix bars in an ADA4 on the B6 platform. I've heard that it's exactly the same on the B7 platform, but because I don't have a B7, I'm not sure. So if you found this video and you've done it, or you end up doing it on your B7 and it works like this, do let me know. And if you've liked this video, send me a like, send me a comment. I really appreciate all the feedback that I get. In the meantime, though, I look forward to coming to you in a new video very soon. Thanks and goodbye.